I have a question, Stuart. I'm wondering if you can talk about ang the energy of anger as either a protective energy or as a destructive energy. Like if it can fall in both of those categories well, or- the energy you know. of anger, when you, you know, dump it on another human being, there's nothing but create a lot of problems. Nothing. Uh, people are incapable of absorbing that, taking it in. They don't have unconditional love in their heart. They don't realize that somebody with that kind of anger is a very troubled person. You know, and it creates a great deal of problems. Uh, my suggestion is very simply, you know, you can take that same anger that you might dump on another human being and just bring it into the chakra below the navel. And that anger is an energy that is strong enough to truly open that chakra and develop that chakra inside you and get transformed into harmony, into balance. And when you learn to do this, you learn to master yourself. And that really is all anger is about, people who haven't mastered themselves. But when you can draw it into that chakra, when you can focus it through your will, through your training, through your conditioning inside of doing deep meditation, you transform something that could not only hurt you, but hurt somebody else into harmony, into balance, foundation, and very deep inner strength. So, you know, anger, you know, it can kill you, it can give you life, depending upon how you use it. And we all have a lot of anger. We're all pissed off at the world and all the indiscretions and the terrible things that have taken place in our life. But part of the training of deep meditation, as I learned it from my teacher, is how to transform what's killing us into a life-giving force, what can give us life. The other thing is easy. You dump it on another human being. They dump it back on you. Before you know it, you're in a fist fight with somebody and people get hurt. If you take it deep inside, you're using what can damage yourself and another human being to learn how to master the internal chaos. And if you don't master the internal chaos, the rest of your life is just full of anger full of insecurity, full of fighting and shouting and war and revenge and, you know, and all of that stuff that does nothing but create more problems than the universe needs. And this is totally up to each and every one of us, you know? Do we want to get the training? Do we want to condition ourselves to master our inner chaos? Or do we want to spend our lives blaming the world for our problems and fighting with everybody and knowing better than everybody else and creating a nightmare, you know? Life has to be a living nightmare if we live that way. But it can be transformed by learning how to do it. it took me many years to learn how to do what I'm talking about. And it not only helps me, it helps everyone's in my life, every one of you. I mean, I could get angry at people, you know? <clears throat> and, you know, I've learned how to say, no, that doesn't work. I have to be bigger than that. How am I gonna be bigger than that? I have to learn how to transform these things into, you know, Harmony, balance, love, forgiveness, etc. <clears throat> this is what the meditation is all about. Because until you learn how to transform all these things, how does the energy of God flow through you? Everything is dammed up with one's own chaos. 
So that energy cannot flow through. It cannot be offered to the world. It comes like static on a radio. You know, it, <laughs> it, it just doesn't work with that you know, with compassion, with love, with sweetness, with strength, real inner strength, not ego and persona strength that people create for themselves to justify their existence, but a strength that comes from surrender, letting that higher energy. And for God's sake, there's nothing stronger than the energy of God, and it works through you it always gives you the right answer and how to deal with yourself and other people. But one has to get, keep saying it, you know, I hate to sound like I'm running some military, but you have to get training, you have to recondition a lifetime of functioning in order to do these kind of things. We have to change inside. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. It's very positive. Uh, Stuart? Yes, Lou? Uh, can we also transform uh, the anger that's thrown at us, or do we just uh, transform our own emotions caused by it. Yes, you can get strong enough in yourself that when somebody is angry, you know, and they throw it, you can, it, it, you know, you can transform it in yourself. It doesn't get you, it doesn't really affect you deeply inside because you have that balance inside, that power in yourself to be able to be rooted and not allow somebody else's craziness to make you crazy. Look, I, I, you know, I, I've spoken about this a lot, you know, but I'll, I'll, it's a great story, you know. Uh, years ago, when I was studying with my teacher, Rudy, I had a very difficult winter. I was teaching meditation. I was teaching Hatha Yoga. I was running a business. I was going to school. I, you know, I was like a, a freaking octopus, you know. I had a thousand things I was doing with my and I went up to Rudy and I said, Rudy, can I go up to Big Indian and spend five, four or five days up there? I said, I'm dead tired. He said, Stuart, that's what it's for. Go up there and chill out, you know? And this was an ashram that he had bought in the country. So I went up there and I got to the ashram. I found a room in the house where the, you know, the residents were. And I looked out the window and I saw about an acre of land right in front of me, where the grass was almost taller than I was. And, and there was a tractor there with a plow on it that I could cut the grass with. So I said to myself, wow, that would be a great activity. You can, you know, you know, can contribute something to running this place and help fix something. At the same time, you can let go of all this tiredness. And so I got on the tractor, I started, turned it on, I started driving it, and I'm happily plowing the land, you know, getting rid of that grass that needed to be gotten rid of. And all of a sudden, you know, out of nowhere, the guy who was kind of the manager of the ashram comes running across this field there and starts screaming at me, literally screaming at me. And I stopped the tractor, I got off the tractor, and we're standing there like nose to nose. And he, I, I, in 20 minutes, having been in the ashram, I couldn't have done more than, I mean, I must have done 400 things wrong. He was just yelling at me. And it used to be, before I met my teacher, that would lead to a fight. I would have to justify myself. I would have to be right. And, you're, and I just stood there and I listened to him. I didn't allow his anger to affect me. And I listened to him, and I listened to him. And after about 10 minutes of him dumping all his tension, it was just tension that was coming out of him, he looked at me with tears in his eyes, and he gave me a big hug, and he said, thank you, Stuart. And I could have never have done that without the training 
without my teacher teaching me how to build that chakra below the navel. I could have never have done that. I would have had a fist fight with the guy. It would have been terrible what would have happened. But it was the training that allowed me to just look, I, I like this guy. He's a friend of mine, for God's sake. <laughs> you know, he's tense. He need, and he just and then it, tears came in his eyes. Give me a big hug, and he said, Thank you. Yes, you can transform somebody else's anger, their tension. If you don't let it get to you and you're strong enough to stay quiet inside and just let it, you know, you can transform whatever comes in into chi, into energy, into shakti that will activate kundalini. You can transform it into life-giving forces. And what you can transform will just flow right past you. I'm not talking about something I read about in a book. I miss something that actually happened to me. And I never forgot because it was such a profound teaching. I mean, I used to live in an apartment building where the superintendent in the building really had a really unhappy guy. And he just never had anything but problems with everybody and yelling at you. and. One day he started yelling at me and I just stood there and I looked at him. I didn't say a word. And eventually he exhausted his tension and he looked at me, big smile on his face and said, all right, we'll work through it. <laughs> the situation <laughs> dissolved. I've had that so many times in my life, you know? And when I was younger, it was always about being right, being better, not being intimidated by somebody else. As I learned this way of living, it became, I don't have to be right. I also don't have to allow somebody else's insanity to disrupt my life. And I won't do that by being better than them. I can only do that by being stronger than them internally, being deeper, being more grounded than them. I'm sure there isn't one person here who hasn't been through something like this, you know? But it's just a whole different way of dealing with the world. And people deal with the world, you know? Mostly we deal with the world by having to protect ourselves. You know, having to be better than the next person, you know, and it doesn't work. I had that the other day. I, I was talking about it last night. You know, I had to do something with working out the rent of my apartment here where I'm living. And I went to the, super, the manager of the building and, we, and he got very defensive. The guy got very defensive about maybe lowering my rent a little bit or whatever was going on. And finally, I was just sitting there quietly talking to him and not intimidating him and just, you know, and, and he looked at me and he started to smile. Started to smile. And finally, we had a little more conversation and uh, he said, okay, I'll take it up with management and we'll see what we can. Came back, they lowered my rent. Not a lot, but they lowered it some. But it was funny because initially he was so intimidated by my presence there. I could see it in his eyes, you know, he was like, and it turned out to be something positive and good, you know, and I didn't get upset at him. I remember I had a landlord, I'll never forget this, when I was living on Fourth Avenue and I was paying him a lot of money. I had a very big space, a huge loft, and it was a beautiful place, really drop dead place. And I was paying him a fortune to live there. And uh, it was about $6,000 a month it was costing me to live there. 
And this is back in the 90s when 6,000 was probably like 30,000 a month, you know? And I <clears throat> finally went to him, met him he, in his barbecue place that he owned in New York. And, uh, and the guy living downstairs from me was paying 4,000 a month. And he had just moved into the loft. And I said to him, in the middle of our conversation, I said to him, Herb, I said, I hear the guy beneath me is paying $4,100 a month. I'm supposed to be your best tenant. You always tell me that. I never give you any trouble. And I'm paying six. On that spot, he lowered my rent $2,000. I never in my life ever heard that happen in New York City. He's lowered my rent $2,000. And I looked at him, I couldn't believe it. I didn't get upset at him. I didn't get angry. I'm just talking, call me, call me. You know, I'm your best tenant. And you're charging me two grand more than a guy just moved in. Okay, you're paying me 4,000 a month instead of six. <laughs> I mean, it's how life works when we don't have to defend ourselves and get upset at other people. It doesn't always work that way. But it works a lot like that. I mean, that was like a miracle. I couldn't believe what happened. You know, I walked out of that place. I said, Stuart, this is incredible. God is really working for you. <laughs> so yes, we could take somebody else's tension if we have the development inside ourselves and we can transform that tension into something positive in ourselves and even with them. Does anyone else have a question? I hope this is all clear, you know, because it just creates another human being that we're living with, and that's ourselves. <laughs> that's pretty cool, you know? Okay, so I'll repeat it again. On Thursday, I will have a class. It's Thanksgiving here in the United States. But I will have this European and Israeli Mid Eastern class, and you know, Brazil, you know, four continent class that I have here, will have on Thursday. And, uh, and uh, I won't have a class in the evening, Thursday, because most of you are going to be at Thanksgiving dinners. And, you know, it's a, so, uh, but there will be this class on Thursday. Does anyone else have a question? And just for my own kind of edification, I, I'm enjoying, you know, writing these things I post on my website, this Tantra stuff and other stuff. Just wrote four of them this morning. And one of them I sent to Bob Sink. He's going to post it on Saturday. I hope you would go there, take you 10 minutes to read these things. There's like a beautiful Tibetan art museum I'm posting there. <laughs> it's really very interesting place. And I'm enjoying doing this. And I'm also enjoying sharing these things with people who are interested in reading about them, you know? And I would think that you'd be interested if you're doing this meditation, you know? So I hope you go there and benefit from this. And Another thing that I can share. And God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you for being here, being part of this. And I hope to see everyone on Thursday. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.